The staff at the Oreos factory were so amused by the cookie which came out looking like a cluster of grapes. That they didn't realize the cat in the room walking with jello on its tail. Right over a betta fish. Towards the hay near the IgG looking post. Where there was a random tall yellow man reading a warning sign. just as a van crashed into the Mars model, which they kept around. All right, this is our scene on Staphylococcus aureus, or Staph aureus, and it is taking place at this Oreo factory over here. And we're focusing on the staff at the Oreos factory. And staff at the Oreos factory, or staff at Oreos, is going to remind us of Staph aureus. Now in this scene over here, the staff were amused because one of the cookies didn't come out looking like a cookie. Instead, it came out looking like this purple cluster of grapes over here. The fact that it looks like a cluster of grapes reminds us that Staph aureus under the microscope looks like clusters of grapes because it grows in clusters. And in fact, Staph aureus means golden cluster of grapes. We'll explain soon why it's called golden. But if we note in this scene over here, it's purple. And that's because Staphylococcus aureus is gram positive and it stains purple in gram staining due to its thick peptidoglycan wall. Now, the staff over here were so amused by this scene over here that they didn't notice other interesting things going on in the factory. Let's get to those things. We notice this cat over here with the jello on its tail passing over the betta fish. The cat shows up in our scenes of catalase positive bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus is catalase positive. And the jello reminds us that it's coagulase positive, which helps differentiate Staphylococcus aureus from other staph bacteria, such as Staph epidermis and Saprophyticus, which are not coagulase positive. And the beta fish on the floor reminds us of beta hemolytic, that Staphylococcus aureus is beta hemolytic. Now, this cat was walking towards the hay over here, and the hay is going to remind us of protein A. And in fact, it's shaped like an A, which reminds us of protein A. And this A over here is bound to this post, which kind of looks like the IgG. And this reminds us that Staph aureus produces a protein A virulence factor, which binds to IgG at the FC region, which inhibits complement activation and phagocytosis. Then we get to this tall man over here, the man that's tall for mannitol. And the fact that he's yellow reminds us that Staphylococcus aureus ferments mannitol, turning the agar yellow. This man over here was looking at this sign over here, which I'll make bigger now so that we can view a little bit better. Here we have a warning sign telling the workers to stay away if they see this, but they didn't realize. This warning sign says that exposure to this organism may cause the following. These are diseases which Staph aureus can cause, and in order to make this a little bit easier, I have a mnemonic here, most apes. Most apes is going to help us remember diseases which Staph aureus causes. Let's explain. M is for meningitis, O is for osteomyelitis, S is for septic arthritis, and T is for toxin-mediated diseases. Staph aureus has various toxins which mediate various diseases, it includes toxic shock syndrome, and in order to have a visualization for various aspects of toxic shock syndrome, I had these pictures over here. The thermometer reminds us of the fever. The diarrhea reminds us of the diarrhea. The skin's exclamation reminds us that that also happens in toxic shock syndrome. And the bloody tampon over here reminds us that prolonged use of tampons is associated with toxic shock syndrome. Scolded skin syndrome has a similar pathogenesis to, to, to toxic shock syndrome, but is caused by the exfoliative toxin and rapid onset food poisoning. This occurs due to ingestion of the preformed toxin and is associated with a non-bloody diarrhea and vomiting. This one is actually caused by an enterotoxin. Back to our mnemonic, A for abscess, P for pneumonia, E for endocarditis, and skin infections such as cellulitis and empatigo. And then we get to the back of the room where we see Mars. This reminds us of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. And the van going through it reminds us that vancomycin is effective against MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. Penicillin used to be effective against Staph aureus until it became resistant to penicillin. And then we started using vancomycin. But some strains of Staph aureus have actually become resistant to vancomycin. And that's why sometimes various antibiotics are given to treat Staph aureus. A final word that I want to make is that if you look at this worker over here, 
you may have noticed that he has a little bit of purple by his nose, ears, armpit, and groin, which reminds us that Staph aureus is a common colonizer of the nose, ears, axilla, and groin. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Staph aureus. Take care.